Welcome into another Musings from the Mind of Tutorial where we're going to look at uh, rigid body physics and make this satisfying wrecking ball smashing through a pile of blocks. And we're also going to do a neat little trick uh, to light with an HDRI. And as you see in this uh, picture, I'm also going to show you a little bit about uh, Ducky 3D's real-time uh, materials add-on. Uh, I was able to quickly add these materials that have a great metal and marble look um, just using uh, that add-on. Uh, the link to his add-on will be in the description. But with that said, let's jump into uh, Blender. Let's create a new general. I'm going to hit A to select everything. Delete it. It's seven to go to top view. Shift A. We're going to add a mesh torus. We're going to hit tab. I'm going to select X ray up here so we can get the vertices behind as well. I'm going to get Y and I'm going to stretch this guy out two units. And then I'm going to tab back out of that. And if you'll notice, uh, when I did that, the origin point stayed up here, which means if I work with it, it's going to rotate from up here instead of the center. And I really want it to rotate from the center. Uh, and actually, if we don't get our origin points correctly, then the physics just won't work, right? So I'm going to set origin to mass center. I am going to go to the side view here. And I am going to... Well, actually, I'm going to stick to the top view. I'm sorry. Uh, Shift D. And I'm going to bring this down on the Y to about here. I'm going to rotate on the Y, or Y90, hit enter. Now I'm going to go to the side view. I'm going to rotate this guy on the X90, and then line him up right here where I want him to be. Go back to the front view by hitting 1, Shift D, rotate Z90, and then we're going to get Z and bring them down to about right here. Let's go to side view, make sure, yep. We don't want the objects intersecting with each other. Um, and then I'm gonna select this guy right here and I'm going to shift D. And again, on the Z axis, I'm just gonna bring this down to where it's not intersecting. And I'm just gonna hit shift R one, two, three, four times to get us a good length of chain. Uh, I am going to select all of these guys, I'm going to go over here to our physics properties, select rigid body, active. I'm going to go ahead and set these guys to 5 kilograms. And the reason I'm doing that is in a minute I'm going to put a weight on the bottom of this. And if our mass isn't increased, the chain would just break. I'm going to change the shape from convex hull to mesh. While this slows down our baking of the physics, uh, what it does is if I had left it at convex hull, it would basically have made all these solid objects, and so the interlocking chain wouldn't work. Uh, selecting mesh makes it create uh, the properties around uh, the mesh. Then we'll go down here to sensitivity, and I'm going to select that to 0 0.01, and that's basically how far away uh, the, the, the objects will be from each other's surfaces. The bigger that number, the bigger the gap that would be. Uh, and so you won't get those necessarily get those collisions. Um, and now I want to go up here to object. I'm going to go to a rigid body and copy from active so that all of our chain pieces now have the same um, rigid uh, body properties. And if I hit space, you'll see it drops uh, into infinity. So what we're going to do, just to kind of show you what some of this looks like, I'm going to hit mesh. I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to scale the plane up. And get Z to bring him down here. I'm going to give him a rigid body as well. I'm going to set him to passive so he doesn't fall. And we're going to hit play again. And you see the chain collapses onto our collision object. Now the last thing we need to do is I need an anchor point. So I'm going to go up here to this guy right here. And you might think I would want to switch him to passive, but I don't want to do that. What I'm actually going to do is I want to uncheck dynamic. 
and then you'll see the chain drops but it holds on to that anchor point up there all right so now then let's and I'm gonna have to lower my floor because it wasn't letting it go all the way down so get Z I'm gonna drop it down to here and then on our chain here I'm gonna select this last link of the chain I want to tab into edit mode AA to clear my selection shift a we're gonna add an, a UV sphere and we're gonna get that guy Z down to here we're gonna scale it up like this put about right there uh, maybe up just a, let's scale it just a little bit bigger and let's go to the side view because it's not lined up get Y line it up right there and we get seven from the top looks like we're good go back to the front uh, actually are we lined up in the center we're pretty close well nope we go right there I'll tab back out and what I want to do with the selected again I want to set the origin to the center of the mass and I'm also going to increase the mass of this particular one to 30 kilograms and again we'll push and we'll see the chain holds all right and then the other thing we can do now is we can go back to this frame one select everything but the anchor uh, I'm going to switch this to my pivot point to be the 3d cursor I'm going to rotate this guy up to here um, I need to go over here because um, I'm not matching up here so I'm going to rotate X 90 uh, I'm sorry Let's select that all again rotate X 90 enter get put that bad boy right about there um, line him up so he's inside uh, that I want to change my pivot point back to active element and then watch the fun the chain goes and whips um, I, ooh wow okay you know the reason it did that is I don't think I don't think I let me add let's try this 10 and let's try that again uh, all the way back to the beginning and make sure that holds yep now it holds and that's what I was talking about where if the weight or the mass is too much the object won't be able to hold it one thing I noticed though is that um, it just it's it seems to move a little slow and I think it's because the mass is so much so what I want to do is go up here to uh, my scene properties I want to open up rigid world and I'm gonna take the speed I'm gonna double it to two and then I feel like it responds much better there so we have our physics for our wrecking ball and now we just got to have something for our wrecking ball to hit. So let's go back to, to one. And let's do shift A cube. Uh, let's scale the cube by two. We're going to get uh, on the Z axis, bring it down to here. I'm going to hit uh, the dot on the numpad so we can zoom in on it. And I want to get it just a smidge off of uh, that guy. Uh, we're going to go over here and we're going to add an array to this guy. So let's look at it from the top. Um, you know, I think that's I think it's too big. So I want to do scale 0.5 and go back to the way it was. And I on the board 
get and see and right down here let's go look at it from the top again and what I want to do here is I want to go to uh, the array I want to add an array modifier and I want to make it six I am going to um, <coughs> change the relative offset to 1.02 because we need just a little bit of space between these blocks so they don't just explode I'm gonna duplicate this twice and I'm gonna go to this one and I'm gonna change this to zero and make the Y the 1.02 um, and then <coughs> I am going to do the same thing on this last one make this zero and make uh, Z 1.02 and I'm going to get this guy, and I'm just going to kind of center him up as best I can right there. And now we have a, a cube of cubes. Um, this right now is still just one object. So starting at the top, we're going to apply all of our array modifiers. And... We are going to object set origin to center of mass. I am going to go over here to my rigid body properties. Uh, we're going to make this 0.1 kilograms. Uh, and we're going to change this to mesh. And we're going to change the sensitivity to 0.01. And we're going to let our um, wrecking ball come and smash it but it moves it all as one box because it's still uh, one object so what we can do is we tab into edit mode P separate by loose parts we're gonna tab out of that um, you'll notice they're all sharing the same origin point at this point so if we do this now uh, I hit play and it explodes before uh, it can even do anything so what we want to do is, again, with all these selected, set origin point to center. They now have their own origin point, and they just wait for the ball to hit and shatter them. So that's the quick and easy uh, way to try to set up this rigid body. I want to show you a couple of things. If we jump over here to our shading, I want to go to the world. Um, I personally like to use the lights of an HDRI to, um, to light my scene, but obviously I don't want the HDR in the background. So I'm going to go over here uh, on my world. I'm going to change from color to environment texture. I'm going to load one I got from HDRI Heaven, or Haven rather. I've got it up here on my desktop. And... these settings yeah we're good there and as you can see this is all now uh, in in my world here and what I want to do now is add a camera uh, where did all of my where's my whole world go I don't know how I got all out of whack there. So I now found my object. Um, let's see, I'm going to go this way. So I want to shift A. I want to add a camera. And I'm going to do control alt zero to put it kind of right here. Um, I am going to get and move it up here just a little bit. And then let's see here. I think we're good with that. Um, so if I go back to internal and scene world, scene lights, um, you see it's, I've got this HDR in the background. So what we can do now is I can go to my shading editor and I will change this to world. And you see we have our background here. I want to select this guy, move him over a little bit. I'm going to add two 
things I want to add a mix shader and then I want to add a light path and we'll just put it up here and I want to take is camera ray and put it into factor and now this lets me keep the lighting from the HDRI but I um, just get a, a plain back scene and then I just want to show you this real quick before we get out of here um, I have real-time materials uh, that I got from Ducky 3D uh, I can go here and say select metal click here uh, got I want to do, uh, let's see, I want to do cracked metal. I want to click on my ball here, and I'm going to add that material. And now I've got this uh, real quick and easy, beautiful material going on there. And then I can do the same thing uh, with the links of these chains. I can pick a different metal. I'll just do bumped metal, add that material. And then I'm going to select everything in the chain. Select that guy last. Objects. Link transfer data. Link materials. And now all of my um, chain has that metal material. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. And if you've got any suggestions on how I could do this better, I would greatly appreciate it. Till the next time.